Good, hello, welcome to One Is Skin. It's time for masking. I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of masking stuff uh, today in Toon Boom, particularly within Toon Boom Essentials and Advanced. Uh, this will be applicable for Toon Boom Animate, like, basically older versions of the program, anything that doesn't have a node network built into the program. We're gonna be working with layers, and all around this should be a decent introduction to how masking works within this software and a bunch of different scenarios that you're likely to encounter how to overcome those problems and push this effect a little bit further than just, here it is. Now, of course, if you are using premium or a version of this that does have nodes, things are quite a different set of rules. Feel free to follow along. Doing what I do will still work using the node network, but there's a bunch of extra perks and shortcuts that you can use there, which are not applicable right now. Also, if you're using a completely different software, the general mindset and attitude towards this is, it's pretty universal. So what are we gonna be making? We're making a, a planet, several of them, a simple masking effect. If you wanted to follow along with this, the only resources you'll need are these. Uh, so grab some screenshots of them, import them in, and we're good to go. But of course, I encourage you to draw some of your own. I live streamed the creation of these. There's a link to that in the description below if you would like to see exactly how that was done. May or may not get something out of it, all good. But nonetheless, I have six different planet scapes. I also have this, a layer of a simple black circle. I've duplicated it six times, one for each layer. Now, although it is possible to use one mat for all of the masks, for a later stage of this project, when it comes to making these planets move about, we're gonna need one for each. So six planet scapes, six duplicates of the planet mask. We're ready to begin. Now I'm using Harmony Essentials, the baseline version, so I'm working with the minimal amount of tools to be able to pull this off. The first thing I'd like to draw your attention to is all of this space down here. Two secret extra panels. They are accessed in the very bottom left of the interface. You can see they're blue here. The first one is parameters. These show individual coordinate control points and bits and bobs. And this arrow is called additional links. This is used for making different sorts of layers interact with each other, usually for mats, masking which is what we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna need it. To start, I'm gonna focus on just planet one. We'll make this one from start to finish before we work through the rest. Now those globe spin effects that you've been seeing up until now, they're not spinning. You may have figured that out. It is just this flat piece moving from left to right underneath the mask. The first step is of course, to create the mask. At the top of the timeline is a plus symbol, hold down and go down to effects. Right in the middle, the cutter. Select it, it appears underneath Planet One, nestled inside of it. Therefore, Planet One is the stuff that will be revealed through the mask. Now we need to decide what its mat will be. What is going to be cut away or revealed? By default, the cutter will eat away things. So making sure that only Planet Mask number one is revealed, we're gonna press the plus button on the cutter and you see the mat option is revealed with drop layer here. Do as it says, grab planet one and drop it where it says so. As I said, the cutter will eat away. We are not seeing everything we want to see. To flip it around, select the cutter and by either double clicking on the star or just looking up here in the layer properties panel, there is an inverted checkbox. Click that, it will switch it out, we get what we want. The process of just making a mask is already done. It's a very straightforward process. And if I was just showing you how to do it, the video could end here. But I don't wanna do that here. There's a lot more going on. So let's walk through that and make this a bit more elaborate. By the end of this, this is gonna be quite a dense looking timeline. So stick with me. First of all, sliding this thing back and forth. Yes, it works, but we are limited. It only goes so far to the left and so far to the right. You can't make this thing loop. It will not rotate all the way around yet. Now turn the cutter off and activate one of our backup circles so we can really see what's going on here. We're gonna create the animation of this thing spinning. The process is gonna be a little bit different for each planet to demonstrate different scenarios you're likely to encounter in your own journey. First, exposure is only currently set to one frame. We have to increase that to about, oh, 150. Select all the frames for everything, right click, and select extend exposure. Fills with frames. There's a bit of a trick to making it loopable and it can feel like a bit of a cheat when you see how it's done. There's a couple of different ways. And if you're using a screenshot of what I had, this probably won't be exactly applicable yet. This is for those who drew something from scratch because I'm gonna be interacting with the direct vector artwork. We're simply copying the whole lot, copying and pasting it down and lining it up to the side like so. Same thing, twice as long. 
Easy, right? Uh, now, we need to put it inside of a peg. So on this planet one layer, above here, next to add a new drawing, press add new peg. The planet cutter and its mat are all placed inside that peg, respectively. And with the first frame selected, go to the advanced animation controls at the top. Remember, if they're not there, right click and choose advanced animation. Choose the positional movement tool, the leftmost one. Pull it all the way to the left. So, you know, just kind of crossing over the edge like that. And on frame 71, frame 71. Select that and pull it all the way to the left enough that part that was crossing over with the circle before is what's going to be crossing over with it now. So this will take a little bit of trial and error, kind of go back and forth until all the greenery is as exactly as it can be. There's likely several different ways you can do this, but this works just as well. So you can see the second version of the map doesn't really come into full play. It's only there to overlap enough to bring things back around to the start. But when this animation plays twice, there's gonna be a problem. And that's when we paste this down, the last frame and the first frame are gonna be the same. There'll be a stutter, a slight pause. We can correct this by selecting the frame just before the last one, adding a new keyframe in and deleting number 71 leaving us with an animation 70 frames long. Select the whole thing, paste it down on frame 71, giving us an animation 140 frames long and involving two complete rotations of the globe. Well, in this case, two complete wipes of shapes behind black circle. Until, of course, we turn our backup mask off and the cutter back on, the effect will play in full. Lovely. Didn't want to cut things off early, but ha ha, that's what I'm going to do. So, there is a lot left to go. We have only made one planet work. There are five more. What differences are going to take place within them? Hmm, I wonder. I guess you're going to have to come back and see it. Oh dear. So keep an eye out for more planet masking in a few days. In the meantime, give this a try. Bye.